Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. How's everyone doing? It's good to see everyone. Good to see you. Great. Yeah, Adam, good to see you again. Netflix reuniting us. We spoke last year for a perfect pairing. We're back. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. Then remember this energy too. And we've yeah, yeah, yeah. You're pepping us we right up. Be exciting. So season two of Sex Life is right around the corner. If we're not excited, what are we doing here? Right. Let's be honest. Um, That's right. Exactly. That's right. Sarah, first question for you. Two seasons now of playing Billy. When do you start kind of understanding and having a full kind of grasp of this character? Would you say kind of at the end of filming season two, or are you still kind of learning and figuring this character out? Well, I feel like I'm always learning about everything all the time. I never claim to know anything about anything. The only thing is, is I hope I'm smarter than I was the year before. That's all I can hold myself accountable for. But um, I really feel like it was kind of kismet that I got to be Billy. You know, it's like, I was sort of in a place of myself where I had a lot of Billyisms going on and life was very lifey. And I just feel like the combination of my life and the things that I was sort of going through and who this character was and what she was going through, they were definitely paralleling each other. Yeah. And I found a lot of my own strength in Billy, you know, season one and the courage that she had. And I'm in the process of writing a book about it all right now as well. So I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever figure her out, but it's an honor to keep trying. All the characters are just super complex. One of the things I love the most about this show. Now, Margaret, my question for you is in terms of the audience member, like I would say watching this show is the equivalent of basically like getting on a roller coaster that you can't kind of leave. Like it just keeps going and going. But in are you ready of- to stop? Or- <laughs> Hold on. Wait, that like- sounds like a nightmare. I know. I love well, roller coasters. Well, you know, well, roller coaster, but maybe sometimes the roller coaster, though, Adam, takes some time and then it goes back up, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. For a little bit, and you're like, that felt good. I don't, and then you're like, I want some more. Oh God! Yeah. I want some more. Oh man, we're having a whole conversation now about roller coasters. I'm sorry, but this is great though. It's so good. No, but I mean, in terms of like Margaret, in terms of making it, does it feel like that a little bit, where it's just kind of nonstop, like from the creation perspective and, of things? I mean, from the technical aspect of putting the show together, certainly. I mean, we've been yeah. shooting this entire thing during many of the heights of the pandemic, and that has certainly informed, you know, the day to day ins and outs of it, and and when we're allowed to be around each other and when we're not, and all of that, and and it's long hours, long nights, and you're doing a lot of sex scenes with relative strangers, um, so there's. There's certainly some roller coasters in the technical doing of the work, but then also emotionally, you know, uh, what my character goes through in season two is is wildly different than the character that I was building in season one in terms of what I was working with as her backstory and as how she became this person that we meet in season one. And so you get more layers of her backstory and how um, she's become this independent, fierce warrior woman. Um, and it turns out she's got a lot of softness and a lot of vulnerability that she's got to rediscover and got to allow back into her life in order to get to the next step, the next phase and the next level of true fulfillment and true having it all. So whew, it was a lot to do, but we made it happen. I do know what you mean now with the roller coaster. So I'll take it back. Only because every scene in the storyline is so heightened all the time and the stakes are so high. Yeah. Not yes. heightened, the stakes yeah. are so high. Yeah. Yeah. It's always like, love my life, my heart hurts, this, choices. That's you know, what I mean, life. yes. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I take it back, yeah. okay? Let's yeah. just edit that last bit out. You got, you got bad, me yeah. terrified for a yeah. second. I'm like, no. <laughs> Because I feel like that's a good thing. I love roller coasters, okay? <laughs> and I love the show. I love them too. <laughs> but Adam, my question for you too is, you know, mindsets returning for a season two always interests me from a kind of creative actor perspective. Are you yeah. focusing on Brad? Are you focusing on everything? Like, what is kind of the mindset of, like, you want to see the script? Is it a little bit of both, like, focusing on all the kind of storylines, specifically your character? No, I'm, like, not, I'm curious I'm about not, that. I mean, it's, it's good to figure out where everyone's going, but it's I just my job is just to make sure I, uh, I play Brad to the truest form I can, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do him justice and... The storyline and all of that stuff's out of my control. Like it, yeah. you know, the material that they uh, they give me, I just that's my job. That's what I'm lucky enough and privileged enough to be employed to do. So it's just like I have to give that all of my attention and make sure it's the most authentic version. And 
you know, the audience can sort of feel his journey along the way. So yeah, I'd, I'd obviously read it all, but I'm not too worried about it. That's that. That's why out of out of control, kind of like a roller coaster, right? Go on, man. <laughs> Sorry, no, no, no. <laughs> Very quick before wrap up. I hate Sorry. roller coasters. That's a nice. No, I'm just... Anyway, Sorry. I get nauseous. <laughs> Sorry, I do want to ask before we wrap up. Um. What was something in season two, very quickly, that you kind of enjoyed that was a lot different than season one in the script specifically? We're all seeing kind of more growth of these characters. Anything that comes to mind that was different in season two than season one script-wise? This season was a bit different for me. It was challenging for me. There were some things that happened that I didn't quite resonate with. Um, But I just... You know, there's a speech at the end that Billy gives where she says, basically, like, this is not the fairy tale I imagined, but it is a fairy tale of itself. And I really resonated with that. And sometimes life doesn't work out the way you want it to, but you make the best of it. That's really well said. Season two of Sex Life Worldwide on Netflix, March 2nd. Thank you all for your time. It was so great to see you, everyone. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turn It Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.